Well, welcome back, folks. I thought I would share with you today in this brief video, and it, and it will be brief. This shouldn't be very long. The process I use to create the plastic slurry, occasionally I use to repair ABS plastic items on these old Japanese motorcycles. I don't know whether modern bikes use ABS still, but I know the bikes from the area that I typically work on do. And it's really simple. Uh, some clean acetone, uh, fresh acetone, and some ABS, an ABS plastic fitting. This, as you can see, I've already started to cut it up, which you'll see here in just a minute. I'm, I'm actually filming this, recording this a little bit out of order. You'll see me cutting this up on my little uh, uh, bandsaw right over there. And uh, it couldn't be simpler. You you cut up the ABS into, into pieces. You can cut them as large or small as you want. I find cutting them smaller or finer, uh, the acetone will dissolve them quicker, and that's what you're trying to do is acetone attacks this, uh, this ABS plastic and softens it and makes a, well, it depends on how much acetone to plastic uh, you put together to make your slurry. But I usually start out in, a, in a, this jar like this, a little bit of acetone, dump in a bunch of plastic pieces I cut up, and then let it dissolve for a day or two, mix around with a putty knife, and then uh, if, it's, if it's too thin, I'll add more plastic. If it's too thick, I'll add more acetone until I reach the point that it's not quite probably as thick as you would use for polyester body filler, but close. And then you just use a putty knife and you smear it on, just like you would a polyester. So that's what this is going to be about. Again, it's really brief. Uh, we're going to go into the next steps here in a little more detail. But this really, truly couldn't be any simple. We're going to use this little machinist vise to hold this uh, ABS plastic fitting. Just a, a common fitting you'd find in a hardware store for plumbing. You can cut this uh, plastic many different ways. Uh, I don't even have to use a machinist vise. I could probably just roll it through the bandsaw blade. Uh, hacksaw in a bench vise, a lot of different ways you could go. But I'm just going to hold it in a vise, make it a little bit easier, a little safer perhaps. And I am actually wearing uh, earmuffs because this saw is very loud. Here's our cut up pieces of ABS plastic. Uh, I think that's going to be plenty for what we're going to use. Remember, this is really going to become like a filler. Next step is I'm going to get a clean uh, glass uh, jar with a lid. And I'll put this in the bottom of the jar and pour a little clean acetone over it and let it sit for a day or two to turn it into a clean glass jar here with a lid. This actually happens to be a Mason brand. You can see the script right there, that classic Mason script. 
Let's put our plastic pieces in there. And then we're going to pour in a little acetone. This is clean virgin acetone. It's never been used for anything before. I think some of you know, you've been with me for a while, I actually save some of my acetone if it isn't too contaminated and reuse it for other general purpose cleaning projects. But for this kind of work, I'm going to use virgin or clean acetone. You can see it looks like clear water. Pour in just enough to cover the plastic. Put the lid on it, which is a little dusty, I think. I'm sitting so the acetone doesn't evaporate. And we'll let that sit for oh, overnight for sure. And then swoosh it around a couple of times and then get around to it during the course of the, of the day. And uh, we'll see what that looks like here in 24 to 48 hours. Again, I'm looking for a slurry that's like a thick adhesive or a thick glue. I don't want it too thick that I can't work with it. But at the same time, I've got to be able to um, work with it. I've got to be able to spread it. So that's the texture, consistency. I thought to conclude this uh, brief little video, I would show you what the finished slurry looks like. And I think you can see there the consistency of it. This would be about right, I think, for a horizontal surface. If I was going to do a vertical surface, I might make it a little bit thicker. And I'm not suggesting or proposing this is a viable alternative to polyester body fillers, i.e. Bondo or similar. I'm only suggesting this is an alternative, especially if you've got a depression or a divot you're trying to repair. I wouldn't probably use this for a crack. I would use a more mechanical method such as heat and welding, uh, hot staples, wire mesh embedded in the plastic, something similar rather than depending on this to repair the crack itself. I like experimenting with different techniques and uh, methods in my projects, and that's why I'm really working with this one right now, and I just thought I'd bring you along for the ride. Normally, I would suggest probably a polyester body filler, unless you've got a very deep depression, would be a pro uh, likely a more viable solution, but nonetheless, I want to share it with you. Any issues, questions, thoughts, drop me a message. Otherwise, as usual, Thanks for watching.